I am Ramona, and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And the buzz is on because Norman Mercier is back with us to talk about bees. And this time we're going to focus on the hive itself. Uh, keeping a hive, having a hive, what to look for in a hive, and it's so great to have you here. Thanks. Okay. Well, since our last meeting, we've had three monthly meetings with opening hives and uh, talking to new people and our regulars about what's going on in, on in the hive. Our September meeting will be on closing the hives up for the winter, making sure they've had enough uh, food and stored and enough pollen stored mm -hmm. so that they can go in the winter. Doesn't mean we don't keep track of them. We tr probably check them once a month just to crack the hive open and check to see what's going on with the bees, find out if they have enough stores. If we have October and November weather, like last year, the bees were flying, and at that time, you know, there are no flowers, there is no pollen, there is no nectar. So they come back to the hive and they use up the stores that they have in the hive for the winter. Because they, they because the weather is warm, you're saying, it's so they warm kind of go out with their old patent, but then they right. can't bring anything back in, so they're burning off energy and they're hungrier. That's correct. Okay. So they're using up. If it was cool and they just stayed in the hive, they use they use very little stores to keep warm. And Do they energy. hibernate like beers? No, like they don't beer? hibernate. They're they're active all winter long, but they they're in a ball, about that big, uh, sixty thousand bees. Where in the hive are they in that ball? Because the, well, the hive, as we saw last the time, the hive, was broad, it, as we right? close up for the winter, it has two about 10 inch boxes. Okay. And that's what we call the, the brood chambers. Mm -hmm. Normally, they store pollen in the bottom chamber as much as they can get in there, and there are still some brood in there in October. So they store around it, and that's where the ball begins. And then the upper chamber. After the brood hatches, gets full of stored honey, mm -hmm. or we feed them sugar water okay. in September, mm -hmm. and they'll store some of that. Okay. So the ball begins in the bottom brood chamber, okay. and bees. We've had several uh, people, authorities, on what happens to them. They don't go sideways. They stay in that ball because they have to hold the heat in. They keep that ball at 70 degrees all winter long. The hive is not 70 degrees. Out to the edges of that hive can be zero or 10 below zero. Wow. But the ball stays at 70 degrees. And we have people who monitor that. They put little probes in there, and that's becoming more popular, probes in the hive to tell us what's going on. Yeah. And as they use, they move upward. In the ball. The in ball the ball, kind of the whole ball moves upward, and the queen is in there. <laughs> uh, the whole ball moves upward, and they go through the stored honey. Mm -hmm. And usually about uh, February, March, they're on the top. Okay. They, there is honey beside them. They will not go outward unless it's 60 or 70 degrees, mm -hmm. and then they uh, may go out on, on a flight uh, to get rid of waste materials, mm -hmm. and they will not go in the hive. So they go out. If it's very cold and they have to go out, they usually freeze to death, and we'll see them in the snow. But they'll go upward, and as soon as they get to the top of the hive, mm -hmm. which is only two boxes deep, mm -hmm. ten, 10 inches, 10 inches, then you need to start feeding them. And we feed them a pollen patty. It's um, pollen that's mixed with other materials that the bees will eat, mm -hmm. and then we feed them sugar patties. Mm -hmm. Some people feed them a liquid, but the liquid will freeze. If it's on, even if it's on top of the hive, it may freeze. Mm -hmm. It's um, usually a two-to-one mixture of sugar to water, and it's sugar syrup, and they use that for their energy. Mm -hmm. The pollen is used for the protein to keep them going. To keep them going. So last year I had a feed starting in January because they were at the top of the hive. If you don't feed them, they'll die. They will starve to death even though there is honey on the outside of that ball. But they can't leave because they, they need to They can't leave. Keep that they'll all freeze to death. So they will starve to death in that ball. You can open a hive in the spring and there's a whole ball of dead bees. 
And you know, right, you know, exa they starved to death, even though there was honey on the sides. How was the crops this year? And, and Very good. We is have now the honey time? Is now well, the time we is had a honey flow in uh, May and between May and June, a good honey flow. I had honey coming in most of the time, but it's not a lot. It's enough to keep the hive going, and they may start storing. But right now, goldenrod and the purple loosestrife, uh, the, the purple asters, are all in blossom. It's a great pollen source and a great honey source. That I know I noticed uh, a couple days ago when I went to my hives, I could smell something different. You can smell the goldenrod honey when it's coming in the hive. It's a very distinct smell. And so you know they're bringing in the goldenrod honey. And they'll fill up uh, 20 pounds in four or five days. They can put 20 pounds of That's honey so away. so much work. I, it's <laughs> just staggering. It's amazing they, what, they, what they, a little they, bee does. One, you know, wow. one half of a drop per flight and probably a drop in their drop or two in their lifetime. Wow. And yet it builds up by pounds. You can just, uh, you can feel it. Some of our people have hives that are on scales and they can watch that scale go up by five, six, seven pounds a day of honey coming into the And when the do you know uh, when to harvest that honey, when to take that honey? When they, when they put the honey in the cells, they reduce the moisture content to 18% or less. Mm -hmm. At 18%, they put a wax coating yep. over, like we would put uh, wax paper over a, a cookies or whatever to keep them. They wax coat the honey in the hive. So it stores, nothing gets at it, and then they use it up during the wintertime. Or we take it off. Mm -hmm. and, they and, <laughs> and they start all over again. And they start over. So they reduce it to 18% or less. And cover it with wax. Very, very thin coat of wax. Okay. And and you know, and, and the keeper knows, I mean, do they take it like every couple of months? Do they take it when they see, when they're, when they're inspecting and they see that it's all full? Most people put what we call the honey supers, the boxes for honey. They'll put one on uh, probably the 1st of June. And then when we, when we inspect the hive once a week, you have to take it off. Right. So you're looking at it. If it's all capped or about 8% capped, they'll put another one on. Yeah. So you will see hives with four or five or six of these boxes built way up high mm -hmm. because they take it all off in September. Okay. Personally, I take it off the end of June and spin it out. I took some off in July and, and spun it, take the honey out, and then I will be taking, because of the fair, I'll be taking mine off probably the 4th or 5th of September. So you and do, do yours twice. It. I do mine th uh, twice a year. Right. And when you when you take the honey out of the hive, okay, you, you pull the you take the drawer, you pull the slots up, and they have, they're sealed because they're at the that's correct. Now, how do you take that off? Do you, right, does we it just have, get scraped off? I, I don't have a frame, but we have a knife. You can use a a regular uh, bread knife, and because there's wood on the top of mm -hmm. the frame and on the bottom of the frame, and usually the the uh, cells are built out, and when they cap it, it's above the frame. So you can slide that knife along the wood, and it will peel the wax off just like a sheet of paper. Isn't that amazing? And then we have a little pick if some of the wax doesn't come off. And then we put it in what we call an extractor. It's like a centrifuge. Mm -hmm. You turn it, you spin it around, and the honey spins to the outside and comes down in a collection in the bottom. So we take the wax off, put it in a extractor, spin the honey out, mm -hmm. and then you have the honey. And, you and have we, we that's strain pure it. Honey now. That's, that's pure, pure honey. honey. So there's no, there's no additive. No, uh, there's most no of it, most people, that, all people, they just it, it's it's in the extractor. We t take it out of the extractor. It flows out through a, like a faucet, mm -hmm. an opening, mm -hmm. and we strain it. Yeah. And so that takes the any extra wax or bee parts or whatever out of it, mm -hmm. and it goes into a, a container, and from there we bottle it. So it's pure honey. Some people call it raw honey. I am Ramona, and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. Keep the buzz going and enjoy local honey. Have a great day.